So the way we are going to present this uh, uh, this webinar is that uh, I'm going to say what I have to say, and uh, if you have any questions, if you have any doubts, if you have anything to ask me, uh, hang on for some time. What I will do is I will give you answers to all your questions. So like I said to you, uh, this is uh, generally a master class which I take for my senior students. My senior students um, uh, who get to attend it usually every Thursday. Uh, but while this topic uh, seemed to be uh, of great importance, I thought I will spread it to all my students and then I said, why don't I do it for everybody? So this is how it worked out. Uh, I'm going to say a couple of things uh, and then we can, we can take questions in the end. Um, uh, before I start, uh, because there are a lot of new students, before there are a lot, a lot of senior students who know me already, and there are a whole lot of people who are attending me for the first time. So uh, a very quick introduction uh, from my side. Uh, to you so that we guys are on the same page uh, so that you guys understand who I am so that you get a context of what I'm going to speak about and why is what I'm going to say very important to you. So uh, uh, for all the people who don't know me, my name is Chetan Pudar. That's my name. Uh, I'm also being called as Stock Baba uh, for uh, for whatever reasons. Yeah. And uh, probably because I deal with stocks and uh, I have long hair or for whatever XYZ reasons. So. Uh, uh, so that's what it is. Uh, my my story is fairly an interesting story. So let me take about three or four minutes and explain to you what my story in life is. Okay. So, uh, but let me first start off telling you what I do in my life. So I am a full-time investor. I am a full-time trader. Uh, what it basically means is that uh, that is what I do for a living, right? I invest full-time. I trade full-time. Uh, that is what I do for a living. Uh, and when I say I'm a full-time investor and trader, which means I put my money into the stock market and I and and that's what I do which means uh, my net worth my money the money I have uh, goes in the stock market with the objective that it makes money for me so I am not a broker okay I'm not a broker uh, I, I I do not uh, you know open client uh, you know accounts of clients I'm not a, a advisor which means I don't get a salary from someone uh, to advise people, I uh, I do not have a product to sell to you. Okay, uh, I am not uh, uh, I'm not trying to sell you any insurance. I don't do any of those things. Okay, uh, basically a uh, net net is that I invest my time, effort, energy, money, and uh, and my net worth into the stock market to generate returns for me. Uh, I sit down and trade my money so that uh, that's how my house runs and that has been going on for the last 10 years so it's not one year or something it is the last 10 years i retired way back uh, about 11 years back 11 years back i retired at the young age of 36 uh, uh, retirement according to me simply means that i do not have to do things or i do not have to grind in my life uh, to make money okay uh, i can be self sufficient which means that if i don't if i decide that i don't want to do anything in my life uh, I don't really have to worry too much about money. Okay, so that's what retirement means. That's what happened to me at the age of 36. Uh, my target of retirement was 35, but it didn't happen. You know, I missed my target at 36. For 10 years, I only invest when I make money. Uh, I spend most of my majority of my time, one, investing and trading. Two, I spend a lot of time with my children. So, uh, I, uh, you know, 96 to 97% of the time that they are free from their sleep or from their school or from their studies is spent with me in the same room. Okay, I love to teach them what I teach them. In fact, uh, uh, you know, that is one of the main motives of my life to spend time with my children, quality time with my children, and teach them things that I have learned, teach them things that I know. Yeah, uh, I generally travel three, four months uh, a year, which means three months a year or four months a year. I travel uh, because I love traveling. I can do that. So uh, usually April, May, and June, two or three months, we are out of the country. We just travel out of the country to whatever destinations we want, and uh, we come back in the month of June when the school starts. And that's that's how that's how it has been for us five, six years, or a little bit more than that. So three, four months go in traveling. The rest of the time, I'm working. I also teach people how to trade and invest. Uh, I have been doing that for the last 13 years. So it started way back in Singapore. Where I should start teaching teaching people for fun. Um, a lot of my seniors, a lot of my juniors is what I used to teach. I enjoy teaching. It's a passion for me. Uh, that continued. I came to India way back in 2010 end. 
people got to know of me, so I started teaching there. Uh, and currently, I'm on board of a lot of institutes in India. So uh, I'm associated with one of the India's largest brokers, which is Sher Khan. For the last 10 years, I've been teaching them. For the last 10 years, I've been uh, teaching the Online Trading Academy, which is generally known to be the largest and the most popular and the most expensive and the most efficient uh, trading academy in the world for the last 10 years. Probably I'm the most senior there. Uh, I have been teaching with ICICA Direct. Uh, I'm a professor of Mumbai University for their MSc level programs. I am a professor of an institute called Jamna Narbajaj Institute of Management, where I teach a full time program. Okay. It's called MSc in Trading and Finance. It's a program from London School of Economics. Uh, so that's a program which, so you can do, go and do the same program in LSE, uh, which is MSc in Trading and Finance, which is a full time program, a two years program. Uh, for you to be getting uh, into this program, uh, you will have to take a CAT or a CET. Uh, the general cutoff is about 99%. Okay, after that, you need to go through a GD and your interview. And that is when there are only 27 seats available for that, and you will be able to get inside. And what I generally teach in my programs is exactly what I teach there. Uh, over six months, over an entire third semester across six subjects. So. Uh, so, as far as academia is concerned, it is covered. As far as uh, private institutes is concerned, it's covered. As far as brokerage is covered. So, whether you talk about uh, entry level student into financial literacy, into stock market, into investing, into trading, to extremely high end kind of uh, clientele or extremely high end kind of students who want to uh, trade cutting edge, uh, you know, derivatives, uh, the whole, uh, you know, thing is concerned. Now, why did I get into this? The reason why I got into this is primarily because whatever I learned in my life, I wanted to transmit it to my children. So that was my primary objective. My primary objective is that I want to, whatever I've learned as a intellectual, uh, uh, you know, IQ, intellectual uh, knowledge base, I want to transfer it to my children so that my children get a head start. So that is how it started off. And then slowly I realized that there are a lot of people who came to me to learn this and that's how it this whole gamut started but my story is a little interesting my story is interesting because i come from a very very middle class family background i grew up in a middle class area in bombay in a middle class family who had no idea about finance who had no idea about the stock market like everybody else who had no idea about uh, <laughs> uh what really needs to be doing forget about telling somebody your parents that you're going to retire by 36 so uh, so that's how it started uh, my real story starts way back uh in uh in year 1999 uh, a lot further but i will start off with year 1999 so that you understand so i was a graduate from a premier institute uh, mba institute thinking working very hard very intelligent very well read and uh, uh, for some strange reason the career into the stock market starts with a person by the name of ketan parekh so we used to call him kp i all the older guys would know of him ketan parekh ketan parekh was so there is Harshad Mehta and then there is Ketan Parikh. So, so before uh, the Rakesh Junjunwala, there used to be Harshad Mehta and then there used to be the whole gang of people and there used to be Ketan Parikh. And then when he faded off, is where uh, you know Rakesh Junjunwala came into the picture. So, that, that's how it was. And Ketan Parikh was uh, one who created one of the biggest scams in the stock market again way back in 2000. So, uh, my story goes that um, I'm out of college. I'm working for a bank. I had to go and give a 300 crore check to Ketan Parikh, right? So he meets me. So the top management of my bank tells me this is a 350 crore, not actually 300, 350 crore check to Ketan Parikh on one of the last few days of a financial year. And I'm giving it to him. And I'm trying to sit down and forget, you know, figure out why is it that the top management, including the CEOs of the companies, is trying to give money to Ketan Pare, which is 350 crores 20 years back was a huge amount of money. And I get to do that honor. And why is it that somebody as smart as me, or when the, you know, that's when you're younger, you think like that, why is as smart as me, as well read as me, I'm my MBA finance, gets to give a 300 crore or 350 crore check to Ketan Pare. And it didn't come across to me as if he had financial knowledge. So what is going on here? What is it that, uh, the top CEOs or MDs of the companies is giving money to Ketan Pare. And why does this transaction happen? So I went and asked somebody who is who is from the bank thing. I said, who's Ketan Pare? And he told me that 
he's a trader. So I was a little, little new to me, even while I was in an MBA institute, it was a little new to me. So I asked, what do traders do? So he says, you know what, they trade stocks. And uh, I said, okay. I said, why do we give him money? I said, because uh, the bankers want to make money. I said, okay, so don't we have the treasury for that? He says, no, 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 no. These are specialized people. In fact, traders are the kind of people who have so much, who are so good with what they do, that by the time they are 35 years of age, they retire. They have a lot of pressure. They have a lot of work pressure on them. But they make so much money, by the time they turn 35, they retire. And I'm like, aha, interesting. I said, I don't want to be a banker anymore. I want to be a trader. I want to retire by 35, okay? So then a question came to my mind, very simple. If a trader makes so much money that he retires by 35, one, I want to know what he knows. Two, I want to do what he does. Three, I want to know what he doesn't do in his life so that I stop doing that. And question number four, where do I get to know this knowledge and information? That was a simple question which came to my mind. I want to know what he knows. I want to do what he does. I don't want to do what he doesn't do. And where do I get this knowledge? So I started going and asking my dad. My dad used to be a doctor. So I went and asked my dad. I said, dad, do you know anybody who trades? And he tried to look around here and there and he couldn't figure out. And that question remained in my mind. So that went on. Then I moved to another organization where I was working with ICSA Bank. Uh, so then I came across a organization called, uh, you know, a smaller organization in ICSA Bank called as a treasury. Now, treasury is where people sit down and trade big amounts of money. So I was sitting down and meeting the bigger clients, taking the money from the bigger clients and giving it to the treasury. And I had a friend of mine who was working in the treasury. He was sitting down on his laptop and sitting down and taking trades. And he's making a lot of money. And that day, I, that year, I realized that he made a lot more bonus than I did. And he got a lot more raise in life than I did. And I sat down and I thought, I said, what's going on? You know, I am smart. I go to the clients. I make big, big amounts of money. 300 crores, 500 crores. And he's the one who's sitting in the office, comes late, sits in this office, uh, trades with that money, makes money. He gets a bigger bonus, he gets a bigger salary, something is going on. I want to know what he does in his life. So simple question, I want to know what he does in his life. I want to do what he does in his life. Okay, I would want to stop doing things which he stops doing in his life and where I want to know where do I get this information. So again, then I was in ICICI Bank. Uh, I sat down and uh, started meeting a lot of people who are into mutual funds way back 2002, 2003, 2000, uh, that, 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 uh, that genre. Uh, and uh, I sat down and met uh, these guys who were managing mutual funds. And I asked, and, and I saw that. So a guy by the name of Madhusudan Kela, he used to work for Reliance Industries, big guy, he made a big amount of money. And I'm sitting down and I'm thinking that all these guys are all the super HNIs and HNIs are giving money to Reliance Mutual Fund. And Reliance Mutual Fund in turn is getting managed by Madhusudan Kela. So again, the same question. And Madhusudan Kela seems to be making a lot of money. So again, the same question. I want to know what he does. I want to know what he knows. I don't want to do what he doesn't do. And where can I find this information that he does what he does so that I can learn it and make money like it? Simple question. So I, then I started reading books and I got that. And luckily for me, I got a break into an international platform. So I moved from India to Dubai. From Dubai, I moved to Singapore. I was working in Singapore in a couple of Swiss banks. And then I found a treasury. So I was started working in a little bit of treasury. I understood what Forex is. I understood what trading is. I was working with the super HNIs of uh, seven countries. So I was managing about seven countries while I was working with one of the biggest uh, European banks. Uh, uh, so I used to travel. So I, I had a very dream life. A dream life meaning uh, I was only managing super HNI clients, $2 million and above, uh, traveling by flights whenever I could to seven countries, staying at JW Marriott's, having uh, uh, dinners at the best uh, restaurants, going to the clubs, talking to the clients, managing, you know, million dollar portfolios and stuff like that. So that was my life, a great life. Uh, nobody's asking you questions till the time you're meeting your targets, life is great. And then somewhere down the line, I realized that, you know what, uh, this is getting too hectic and this is not what I want in my life because I couldn't spend time with my children. 
I used to go I take a flight on Monday morning, come back on next Saturday, Saturday I should be so tired, Sunday I should sleep, again Monday I have to go back to work. So this is something wrong in my life. I thought there's something wrong in my life. There was a time where I traveled to four countries in three days across three continents. And uh, I did not know whether it was morning or night because I had to meet clients. And I said, there is something wrong again. I don't want to do this. So I said, uh, this is something which needs to be stopped. And I am going to stop this. So I said, nothing doing. I moved out of the bank. And I then I thought to myself that if I am working hard and if I know what I'm doing, I know my skill sets, and if I've learned what I have learned in my life, then why is, and if I know how to make money and I'm making money for my clients, why is it that I am working for somebody else? If I'm smart, if I know the knowledge, if I know the skills, why am I working for somebody else? So this is the whole story background of it. Why am I telling you the story? Because a lot of you guys might also be coming from as humble a background as I am coming from. And uh, if I don't tell you this story, then you will not know that there is a possibility that you could retire a little bit early. There is a possibility to know that you are not aware of the entire hidden world of finance, which is based on a lot of education, a lot of knowledge, and the whole career set which is available. So this is my story to explain to you what my reference to context is so that the examples I give you, you will be able to understand. So far, is everybody uh, on track? So far, is everybody able to understand what's going on? Uh, is this, if any of these things are making any sense to you guys? Yeah, I'm just kind of opening up the, is this making sense? Or what did I take a little bit too much time to explain to you so that the rest of the presentation will be able to understand because the rest of it is going to be a lot more easy for you, right? So great stuff. So let's a little, uh, let's move a little bit. Uh, let's move a little bit ahead. Okay. All right. So uh, coming back to it. So this was my story. Uh, and uh, so now uh, let's. I, I'm going to take one one uh, questions at a time. So so far everybody good. I'm really sorry for this, but I'll make it up for you with this. Is that okay with everyone? Is everybody able to hear me fine? All right. So thank you so much for that. So first of all. Uh, Okay, uh, the first question which I would like to answer you, and this is the question which I said, is it a career? Can it be a career? Can it not be a career? Simple question. Is it a career? And my straightforward answer is, is yes, it is a career. Okay, I'm going to take you down the path. Okay, for a brief moment of time, think that you guys are working hard, you guys are putting your money into mutual funds, right? Who are the people who are managing your mutual funds? They are the fund managers, right? So if those are the people who are uh, those are the people who are managing your mutual funds, obviously they have a career, right? Uh, for example, uh, let me think of somebody else. Let's say Warren Buffett. Now Warren Buffett has been into the markets for 50 or 70 years. So is that a career? Of course, there is a career. So is that a career going on? Yes, there is a career going on, right? So very, very clearly there is a career going on. Second question which I want to answer you is, is that is it gambling? Is stock market gambling? And my answer is emphatic no. Okay, stock market is not gambling at all. In fact, uh, stock market um, uh, is anything but gambling. Uh, uh, there is a lot of education which is available. There is a lot of uh, knowledge base which is available. Stock market is all about um, uh, is all about reading, studying, hard work. Uh, uh, you know creating systems, creating processes, creating strategies, um, uh, doing your homework, uh, thinking logically, uh, uh, you know, uh, being prudent with your money. So there is a whole lot of, in fact, it is said that uh, stock market or the education or uh, the stock market, I think, is a mix between a science and an art. Now, why would I say that? It's actually not even finance. So if you ask me, uh, that is a uh, is stock market finance. Uh, it is not finance, uh, and the reason why it is not finance is because it is actually a science and an art. Now, why is it a science? The reason why it is a science is because stock market is based on a subject which is called as behavioral economics. Uh, behavioral economics is also called as applied finance, and applied finance is based on very strongly what is called as uh, psychology, and psychology is science. So because behavioral economics is based on uh, uh, is based on psychology, which is science, stock market is considered as a science, actually. 
and uh, this is not my definition this is the definition by the program called london, of london school of economics called msc in trading and finance so if you go to jamna lal bajaj jbims and uh, you take your entrance exam of uh, cat or cet and you get 99% or a little bit more than 99% and pass through your uh, pass through your uh, 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 gdn interview and if you are one of the very very few lucky ones to be among the top 27% uh, top 27 students then you will get inside this program so that course defines it as a science okay and actually it is a science because it is very 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 scientific okay and it is also an art the reason why it's an art because there is a skill set requirement so not only is it a pure science but there's a skill set into it and because there is a skill set there so that is why it is called as an art so it's a blend of pure almost pure sciences not pure sciences but almost pure sciences and an art and you mix both of them and that is how you create your money into the stock market so it is not a gamble at all in fact for that matter even gambling is not gambling so there are people who come to the uh, go out to the casinos to gamble and then there are people who are professional gamblers who go to the casino and gamble not with the intention of losing money but with the intention of making money and they know all the tricks of the trade they know all the things which they have to learn in order to, to become professional gamblers and they take that science to such a level that it is not gambling anymore so even gambling is not gambling actually if you ask me right so that's the question number 2 is it gambling it is not gambling at all question number 3 can you make serious amount of money uh, uh, into the markets and the am answer is emphatically yes again making money into the stock market is not about asking your broker because i can guarantee you because i have trained so many brokers and i have been a part of the brokerage industry for 10 years i can tell you this that most of the brokers the job of a broker is to create brokerage for themselves so that they hit their targets so that they get their salary and that is the job of the brokers okay brokers don't know so much more about the about the stock market because if they knew then they would not run behind you to manage your money they would be sitting at home like me and making their money uh, uh, you know uh, by trading their own account or investing their own account so brokers don't know so uh, if you listen to the brokers you're going to lose money if you listen to uh, unnecessary tips you're going to lose money if you're going to come on facebook and listen to some obscure guys talking you're going to lose money uh, if you are going to do things on your own because under se awaz aa rahi hai you're going to lose money multiple ways you could lose money in the stock market uh, but there are ways in which you can actually make money by reading by studying by applying your mind by uh, you know increasing your knowledge base by increasing your skill base by practicing by getting experience right? there are a whole lot of things uh, into it now uh, uh, let me come back to the question which is job work opportunities in the market and is it a career so i'm going to revert to you back saying uh, revert to you with these questions opportunities in the market and a career in the market so let me just Come back and explain to you a couple of those things number one is that i'm going to give you examples of what i know of so forget about uh, forget about me giving you arbit examples i'm actually going to give you examples of what i know so i have worked in the international banking industry i have worked in the treasuries of the banks i have seen people in the treasuries of the bank so i will give you some examples uh, way back in 2003 i hired some guys uh, uh, I used to be a, a you know a, a, a regional head, so I used to uh, hire some people. So there were three guys or four guys whom I hired. Four of them, actually, um, uh, they used to sell credit cards. So you know, the basic amount of money which you get, they were not even working for the banks. They were working for DSAs, direct sales agents. So they used to be selling credit cards. So I hired them. I trained them. But I today I can tell you, one guy has been in Singapore for last 15 years, okay, 14 years. I think he joined, came in 2006, 14 years. He started with Seri Bank. Today, he is the director with a company called JP Morgan, okay? So he must be making money in millions. He is a wealth manager, okay? There's a second guy who also came in uh, to Singapore in 2006. He also joined Seri Bank, Singapore. He was managing, I think, Thailand. Uh, 
today he is working with Bank of Singapore as a director of Bank of Singapore. His salary also must be in millions, if not less. There's a third guy by the name uh, who, again, I don't want to take names, who again I recruited in way back in 2003. I trained him. These guys are all in touch with me. Uh, he he uh, moved to Dubai. He was in Dubai for a long period of time. He became a director of another company uh, of Middle East, or Bank of Middle East, again getting salaries uh, in millions. That's one group of people. Okay. Uh, I know another guy, another friend of mine. Um, uh, studied in IIT Bombay, gold medalist in three subjects in IIT Bombay. Okay. Uh, electronic engineering in IIT Bombay got picked up by uh, a, a bank, moved to Singapore. Uh, he started work. He was working. He was working for uh, Lehman Brothers, which got hired, which got taken over by uh, a company called as uh, Nomura. Today, so he's a trader. So he, his education background is that he is from IIT, hired by Nomura today. He is a team lead, uh, so he's a team head of Nomura for Forex. He must be trading into millions of dollars on Forex on a daily basis, and I'm pretty sure that his minimum salary is at least in in five to seven million dollars. Okay, that's the kind of salaries he's getting. Okay, by trading, by sitting down and trading and managing a group of traders. Okay, uh, so the jump is from being an engineer to that. What most of you guys don't know is that the guys from IIMs, the best guys from the top MBA institutes in India, or best guys from even Harvard or Kellogg's or Wharton or Princeton or Stanford or Mellon or from London School of Economics or London Business School. The smartest, the sharpest, the cleverest, and the highest paid people in the finance and the banking industry get into trading or into investing. Okay. Uh, so, serious amount of career. I'm going to give you another example. There was another lady who was uh, a graduate from Ahmedabad. Okay. Again, uh, moved to Singapore, uh, moved to London from London, moved to Singapore. Graduate. She's not even an MBA. Okay. Today, she is a director of a private bank called uh, Credit Suisse in Singapore. Again, getting paid in millions. Okay. There is another guy whom I know who, who is a Singaporean Indian. So he's a Singaporean Indian uh, who works with a private bank called as Calion. Calion is a credit, uh, credit agricultural Calion. Uh, he manages, so it's called as a private bank. He manages. Uh, the funds and the monies of three most prominent, uh, three most prominent Bollywood families of India. I know of those three because my children have met those superstars in Singapore. Okay, so I'm not going to take names here again. Uh, so he, uh, in 2004, 2005, he was there was a movie which was made in Singapore. He was actually making sure that all got funded. Three major families of India, of Bollywood, uh, their monies are managed by him and probably more of the families now. Okay. Uh, no names. You guys know all the names. Okay. Uh, so, what is he doing? He is doing fund management. Okay. There is another guy whom I know who was my colleague of mine, uh, was heading one of the biggest private banks in India as uh, a, a wealth manager about managing about 1500 to 1600 crores he just quit about a year back started his own own what is called as a home office so there is a concept in uber wealth called as home office which means let's say uh, a family of of um, uh, of reliance industries or a family of uh, uh, of somebody like uh, wipro they will not do banking they will have somebody managing their wealth from their side who will liaise on with other bankers. Okay. So let's say if I'm a family and I've got a lot of money in my family, it's called as a family office. I will hire a guy who will sit in my office, manage my money and liaise on with the bankers for me. So he's a, a gap between the bankers and me. Okay. Uh, uh, so there is a whole lot of industry. I have known some of my students. There are some of my students whom I know. Who, are, who came to me 23, it was six, seven years back, 23, 24 year old kids. Said that, sir, I don't want to be working. I never want to be employed in my life. Uh, sat down and learned trading and investing, and they never work. They just sit down and trade. 
they make their monies, monthly monies, and believe me, they make more monies than most people I know, okay, who work from nine to five, uh, 365 days. So uh, there are a lot of examples uh, into it. There are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there are, there's, a, there's a lot of career opportunities. There is a lot of work opportunities. In fact, I will give you one name which I want to tell you, uh, who is one of the biggest and the most known fund managers or mutual fund managers of India who quit mutual fund industry and started as PMS. So when he started off, he was actually a journalist. So this guy was a journalist. I will give you the name the last. He was a journalist. He was not even a he was not even a MBA finance or doing his uh, you know fancy CA or CFA degrees. He was a journalist. Got into research. Got uh, uh, got inducted into the mutual fund industry. Uh, managed one of the most popular mutual fund in the mutual fund industry. Moved out of it and started his fund house. And he is having his PMS. Does anybody know the name of this guy? He's a very, very popular guy. I mean, on his name, people used to sell mutual funds. In fact, he is a guy who stopped taking money for his mutual fund because he thought that uh, he's spreading himself a lot. Absolutely right, uh, Kenneth Andrade. So the name is Kenneth Andrade, not Baracha, Kenneth Andrade. So Kenneth Andrade actually did that. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that all these people had careers. So if you guys are thinking and asking me a question, is there a career in the mutual fund? There is 100% career in the mutual fund. Only problem is that we, as people who are from the middle class background, they just don't know that stock market is a career. Okay, all this. So uh, let me just explain to you the entire mutual fund industry. Uh, people, let me just give you some titles. Okay, uh, in the mutual fund industry, uh, there is a whole research desk that is into the stock market. Okay, there are fund managers that is in the stock market. Client relationships that is into the stock market. People who are doing what is called as a sell side, that is into the stock market. People uh, who are managing institutional sales into the mutual funds, they have to have a knowledge about uh, about equities. Okay, let's move to the hedge fund. There's a whole, so like in India, we have mutual funds. Outside India, there is a whole gamut of funds called as hedge fund. Hedge funds are, have one of the biggest funds in the world. Okay. You need to know very, very clear uh, knowledge about equities. And when I say knowledge, there are two types of knowledge here. One is the knowledge which you do by doing a program and a course, which will give you a certification, but will not teach you anything which is practical to make money. Then there is what is called as hardcore skill sets. So one where you do a course saying, oh, I did a course from this institute. I have the certification. And believe me, nobody's going to give you a job because you don't have the experience, you don't have the skill set, you don't have the knowledge base. What actually works vis a vis the other guys who actually know how things work and the market works, and those are the ones who are going to be hotly employable. So, the question you need to ask yourself is do you want to get on this side having a certification, or do you want to get on to this side? And believe me, uh, all the people who have the experience and the knowledge base and the skill set are the ones who will any it's a very simple thing yeah you go and talk to a top guy in any organization and say you know what forget about my degrees and all that i will open up my laptop tell me what stocks you are talking about tell me what investments you are talking about and i tell you right now what needs to be done with the stocks where do you invest how do you manage your risk what so making money in the stock market is only three things really speaking you choose the right stock you choose what price to buy and you choose what price to sell. And if you can get just these three things right, okay, what price to buy, what price to sell, and right stock, you're going to make money for the rest of your life. You don't even need to be having a career to work for somebody else. So let me further go ahead and tell you what are the different avenues of, uh, of uh, uh, careers that you have. First of all is the whole banking setup. So in the banking setup, you need to have relationship managers. Who, you know, the garden variety relationship managers who come to you and say, sir, I'll manage your power by relationship. So you need knowledge for that. That's a whole career. Then as you become a little bit better with the relationship management, you need to understand how mutual funds work. You can go very, very deep into that. Then you further up, uh, as you become a little bit more better, uh, you have what is called as private banking relationship managers who network stacks off with about $2 million. So if you don't have 15 crores, then these guys will not even talk to you. Okay, so these are the typical Swiss bankers that we talk about. Okay. These guys get paid in millions of dollars. And I know so many of them because that used to be my career once upon a time. I mean, in fact, all my colleagues or my sub-juniors are into that industry, okay? So huge bunnies, okay? I mean, 
uh, you can uh, you, you can negotiate with your bank saying that I'm getting about four hundred million dollars on the table of my client wealth. I need you to pay me three million dollars for that, and you can negotiate and you can get that. It's a huge career there. Uh, there is something which is called as uh, investment advisors. So all these relationship managers and the big setups like uh, and I'm, let me take the names: Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, Citi Bank, uh, UBS, uh, uh, you know, uh, Calion, Barclays Private Bank. Um, Coots, uh, you're talking about ING, uh, you're talking about Bank of Singapore, you're talking about, uh, there's a whole group of it. If you go towards American houses, Merrill Lynch, you're talking about JP Morgan, Morgan Chase, all these guys who are top end of the spectrum of ultra rich guys, okay, would have need to have a working knowledge base about equities because equities is the largest one of the doubt. Equities, forex, bonds. Uh, largest base that you have. So these are what. Uh, then they, there is also somebody who supplements it called as a investment advisor. So you have a relationship manager and an investment advisor working together. Okay. So that's a huge career. You know, you could have a career over 30 or 40. Then there is a whole thing called as a treasury desk. Every bank, every large bank uh, has a treasury. Now, what does treasury do? All the monies that you put inside the bank, somebody has to manage it, right? It has to be deployed somewhere to make money. The bank will give you 4% returns on your savings account, but the bank needs a larger amount of money. So then they trade in bonds or then they trade in overnight. That is taken care by the treasury. So, you know, treasury people are one of the highest paid people in the industry. Uh, let me tell you, uh, let's say you have the proper knowledge base, you have the proper skill set. The basic starting salary of somebody into the treasury would be roughly around 30, 35 lakh rupees. That is the salary. Bonuses are different. Generally, bonuses are 1x or 2x of the salary. So if you have the right knowledge base, if you have the right intelligence, if you have the right experience, uh, you could start off with that kind of salary. Okay. Then there is a forex desk. So you require people to man the forex desk. You require people to man the equity desk. Uh, then you come to the broker. Okay, uh, brokers like uh, you know, uh, uh, city have uh, brokers like uh, Motila Loswal or uh, Sher Khan or Relic Air and all that. So, in that whole thing, you require a research teams. So, you require research teams. So, obviously, uh, that's a career by itself. You require dealers, you know, high end dealers where you are trading with millions and millions of dollars and rupees. You require uh, people who with skill sets, you require traders. You require fund manager. This is in the whole broker set. So not only you're looking at the whole banking set, you're looking at the whole mutual fund set. We are looking at the whole hedge fund set. We are looking at the whole broker set. Then uh, comes the mutual fund industry. In mutual fund industry, you will require research uh, analysts. You will require dealers. You will require fund managers. I mean, really, uh, a, a person like Kenneth and Prade, obviously hard work. Given all due respect, a person who was a journalist can become one of the top fund managers of India, where people used to wait in queue for his fund to open up so that they can invest with him. Okay, if he can get to that raven, there is no reason why your children cannot get into the whole thing. And the whole reason why is that, you know, somebody needs to be telling the middle class, somebody needs to be telling that segment of people that, you know, there is an option to becoming a do doctor or an engineer. There is an option to be doing uh, only science. There is an option to be doing only economics. This is the whole gamut. Finally, the industry. This is the industry which is hiring. Okay, so there is a whole mutual fund side. There is something which is called as a stay uh, sell side. So there is a buy side and there is a sell side. I'm going to talk about the buy side later. So there is a buy side and a sell side. You require, uh, uh, you know, uh, sales guys to sell sell uh, to sell ideas of equity to uh, to uh, you know institutional investors then there is an institutional investing group where you require uh, you know research you require fund management you require client relationships uh, so there is an insurance industry so the whole insurance industry uh, requires people working for them for research for them for dealers for them for uh, traders for them for fund managers for them for wealth managers. So there's a whole lot of industry. You could become a sub broker. Okay, a lot of you guys uh, uh, must be uh, getting uh, really uh, you know uh, worked up about uh, your work schedule starting from nine o'clock. Or what I've heard now is that now that everybody is working for on home, uh, people are expecting you to work for six and a half days a week. Okay, is what I've heard. 
So rather than the work actually reducing, the work has actually gone in. So somewhere down the line, you guys might be thinking, I don't want to have this life. You can start your sub brokerage. You know, you can have your own clients. You can open your sub brokerage. You can give advice to your clients so that they invest well, they make money, you make money. So the sub brokerage is the whole industry by itself. Individual uh, individual financial advisors. A lot of people would go, want to become individual finance. Advise people on mutual funds. So you need to know the in depth depth knowledge about the financial uh, the mutual fund industry it is available okay so a whole lot of things so but it depends on where you want to go but what i want to tell you is that this information which i gave you so far is not a readily known to the middle class okay middle class things that you either become a doctor or you become an engineer or you get into the this thing and you go into the uh, you know, uh, manufacture industry, but yes, this is all there, and this is the cream de la cream of the world. This is the the payments here are the highest. You know, the number one uh, companies which uh, which uh, I am Ahmedabad or I am a Calcutta uh, uh, considers is companies like Goldman Sachs and Credit Suisse, like Deutsche Bank and um, UBS. So, and what are people in these companies doing? These are equity jobs or uh, jobs which require investment knowledge and equity knowledge now the question is do you want your children uh, to be getting guidance like this okay so that is what i want you to think of so far everybody with me is this making any sense or i'm taking too much time explaining this to you guys can you guys give me a, a little bit of a feedback all right so let's move ahead uh, so, uh, so can you make serious amount of money in the markets? Absolutely, yes. But again, people ask me, is equity investing good? And I'm going to turn around and ask them, are you a good equity investor? Because equity investment will be good provided you are a good equity investor. So do you have the prerequisite knowledge? Do you have the skill set? Do you have the experience? Have you worked hard? Have you read enough? Have you have you thought enough? Have you uh, learned the processes and systems? So it all depends on how good you are, isn't it? Again, uh, let me. Uh, can you consider? So now the question is, can you consider this for your children? And the answer again is emphatically yes. Okay, uh, I teach in MSc program in trading and finance in Jamnalal Bajaj uh, Institute of Management, which in Bombay and in Maharashtra is considered to be the apex. Uh, okay. The best of the guys after getting 99% are the ones who get inducted there. And I teach them and I know exactly what I teach them. Okay. The same knowledge base I have taught my children. In fact, I have two children. Uh, one is 17 years of age today and one is about 14, so about 16 and a half and 14 and a half. And they have been learning the stock market ever since they were six years of age. Okay. Ever since six years of age, it is very clear in their head that they are going to be investors, they are going to be traders, they are going to be into equity. It's very clear. There is no there is no there is no compromise here, there is no second way here. It's very, very clear. All the knowledge base which my uh, my students have are in fact, I create programs to transfer this knowledge set to my children and then I spread it around uh, to the uh, rest of my, my my students. So it is actually meant for my children and then it gets uh, transferred to my students. So that's how it works. So is can it be a career? Yes, you should consider it as a career because there uh, there is so much knowledge that you can transfer to your children and there is so much employability, there is so much employment there which does not get taught told to us or rather i was not known about of, of it okay so what are the general salaries and payments so i'm here right now what are the general salaries and payments that you get you know like i said to you i mean if you are as a relationship manager you know the basic salary will be about and if you know equity as well you will start with about 30 40 000 knowledge base and as you increase it you can go i mean in india i can go up to two three lakh rupees a month a little bit more than that depending on if you are into the elite club of uh, uh, you know banks like uh, maybe a deutsche bank or a ubs or maybe uh, uh, you know rbs or coots you could really ask for anything till about a crore or a crore and a half plus bonuses okay uh, if you are joining goldman sachs i will give you an example uh, this was about four years back or five years back there was this girl who was 22 years of age passed from msc finance 
uh, picked up by Goldman Sachs. Uh, she, uh, so 22 year old girl, zero experience, picked up by Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs paid her about 4 lakh rupees a month. Okay, that's about 50 lakh rupees. Okay, that was a record. So that these things are possible. Okay, uh, so there's a lot of salary happening here. If you go into international banking, then I know guys, I know my juniors who easily make salaries in 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 in, in one or two millions plus bonuses. So plus everything is nice and sweet. Okay, so and a lot of careers. I know one of my juniors who's joined JP Morgan as a as a. I think he's an he's become an executive director today. So really, I mean, he could be making monies that we can we cannot even think of. So I know these people. Okay, so I'm giving you live examples, right? So let's move ahead. So is there a lot of salaries? Yes. There is a lot of payments. Yes. Can you consider it for your children? Yes. How long will the career last? The career can last as long as any other career that lasts. In fact, the, the, the great part about the career in the stock market or the great part of career in the finance industry is that even after you retire, okay, you have the entire experience, you have the entire knowledge base, which you can easily transfer out of the organization into your own working and use it and make money. So even if you retire say, at the age of 60 or 62, you can just take off and make similar amount of money from your portfolio for the rest of your life. You know, so other people feel that 62, once you're out of work, what do you do? But here, because you have that experience, you can just transmit it and apply it on your monies and you can make money. Or you can manage people's portfolios. They will pay you for your services and you can make money. So that is, so till the time you die, really, you can make money till the time you die, you can get paid. Uh, now, the, the great part about the stock market is which does not work with any other industry except for the stock market. And that is why it is said that the stock market is the Rolls Royces of all businesses is because as the time. So if you are looking at the timelines, as the time goes ahead, as the time goes ahead, your skill sets go higher. As the time goes ahead, your knowledge base goes higher. As the time goes ahead, okay. Uh, funny thing happens. The time required to take decisions goes down. So as your skill set goes higher and as your knowledge base goes higher, the time required to take decisions goes down. The time required, okay, to use uh, to use to make more money goes down. Why? Because the thought which is required to trade or invest one stock, or the thought or the time required for you to invest 1 million stocks is exactly the same. You could be sitting with a laptop anywhere. You could be sitting in Bali. You could be sitting in Europe, uh, applying your mind and just one press and you can buy stocks and one press and you can sell stocks. And that is the amount of time which is really required. Unlike any other organization where or in any other uh, uh, you know uh, pro profession where you have to put the same amount of time. So the beauty of the stock market is as you get more and more deeper into the stock market and as you have more and more knowledge and more and more experience the time required to do the same activity drastically goes down okay uh, your energy goes down your effort goes down and you keep on making more and more money so skill will go up knowledge will go up experience will go up money will go up returns will go up but the time to do all this will go down and your effort to go down so it's very very easy to retire early very very easy to consider to retire early okay uh, so let's move forward uh, what are the companies brands and banks for job prospects like i said uh, companies uh, every organization uh, has uh, a treasury let's say for example reliance industry now reliance industry is flush with funds okay who is going to manage those funds the treasury so you need people in the treasury to manage those funds so when that happens uh, Imagine you are you have the right knowledge base and the experience, and you get experience, you get hired by Reliance. I mean, if you are going to be managing fifteen hundred million and two hundred million dollars on a daily basis for them, obviously it is going to reflect in your salary and it is going to reflect in uh, in the bonus that you get. Are you getting what I'm saying? So companies like big treasuries of companies, um, uh, uh, Infosys, uh, ECS is getting paid in dollars. You think it remains in dollars? It doesn't remain in dollars. Somebody has to be sitting down and converting it into Indian rupees, right? Who is going to do that? People who are trading into the treasuries. It could be your son. If you trade him well, it could be your son who would be sitting in ECS and knows Forex and converts it right and you know trades about 
five ten million dollars on a daily basis, his, his salary is going to reflect that. So there is a lot of, you know, almost every company which has got a treasury will require you. What branch, uh, you know, the whole hedge fund industry, you know, uh, hedge fund like Man Hedge Fund, and there are so many hedge fund industries. Which banks, Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, Steady Bank, HSBC, all the top banks in India, uh, Axis Bank, uh, uh, Indusind Bank. In fact, it was said that Indusind Bank, about 25 or 28 percent of the entire profits of Indusind Bank came from the treasury function. Imagine you are able to get there, or imagine if you are able to, uh, you know, position your children to get there because of their intelligence. Okay, so a lot of job prospects if you really know what to be done. Uh, what is the job for mid-management switch? Like if you guys are into mid-management and you guys are sick and tired of it, uh, is it possible for you to move across? Absolutely, yes. Why? Again, it requires the knowledge base that is required. It requires the skill set that is required. Um, the, the, the problem is with the stock market is people come to the stock market when they have exited all their options. So they have, uh, because people generally feel the stock market uh, is like gambling. You don't know what you're doing. Sometimes you make money, sometimes you lose money, you take tips. You are running behind your broker. None of those things. Those are very, very silly things. As a professional, none of those things are done by us. Okay. We sit down. I'll tell you what my general routine in life is. Okay. I get up in the morning. I sit down. I do go through my pre market. I go through all the stocks that I have to do. I look at my portfolio. I figure out what it is. I have automatically sitting down and written down by calculations. And it's it's all it's it's not very difficult calculations. Fairly easy calculations. These are the stocks which I want to buy. These are the stocks which I want to sell. These are where where I put my stop losses. Uh, these are my for my long-term investing. One stock is not working for long-term investing. I need to exit that. I need to get two, three more investing. Where place the orders before nine o'clock in the morning. After that, I'm free. So I could place the orders. They get executed when the market gets opened up, and I make my money. And the rest of the time, I'm sitting down and either talking to my children or uh, living my life or creating programs for my students. Or you know the whole lot of things which you can do really, okay. So uh, so is uh, so mid management for people who are into mid management now. Again, people think that if I want to get into the stock market, which means I have to quit my job and get into the stock. But not necessarily really. Yeah. You know you can uh, you can be working with wherever you are working, whatever you enjoy, whatever career that you have, and on the side you could uh, be learning this, and you could be using that information for yourself. You know, you don't need to be depending on the mutual funds. You don't need to be depending on somebody else giving you advice. I mean, you know, uh, I'll just give you a simple ex example. In fact, there are one or two people who joined me very recently uh, from the film industry. And, uh, you know, with this whole uh, Sushant Singh Rajput thing happening, you know. And this is what I want to tell people. You know, it never harms for you to get new knowledge base it never harms for you to acquire a new skill set and let me tell you this most important which most people forget every decision in your life is a financial decision you want to send your kids to a better college it's a financial decision you want to go for a better holiday it's a financial decision you want to have a bigger car it's a financial decision you are a bigger house it's a financial decision you want to put your parents for better medical treatment is a financial decision. You want to hire two maids to take care of your children, it's a financial decision. Almost every decision in your life has a financial root to it. And if you are able to crack personal finance for yourself or get yourself in a position where you can get make more money, then it is always going to help you. Okay. Uh, uh, while all the actors are doing what they are doing in the last three months, they are they cannot do anything. If they would just learn what they had to learn and acquire another financial skill, you know, they would never be stressed out in life. They could be sitting at home and making money, you know, or a lot of you guys, while you are traveling, you use your intelligence and make money for yourself on the side, along with your job, it never hurts. The way it would, I would like you to position yourself is saying that this is the amount of, let's say you are making an X amount of money uh, as your salary. Start off with making, say, about, 20% of that X from your investing. That takes care of a lot of things, a lot of a uh, lot of expenses. Uh, maybe your restaurant bills, uh, maybe your electricity bills, maybe your housing bills, maybe your you know, uh, maybe your travel. Move that 
20% of your salary to 40% of your salary. Get into a position where you, you are able to make 100% of your salary but 40% from investing and trading. And all of a sudden you will realize that you don't need to go to your boss to get a hike. You don't need to be uh, dependent on someone. Okay, that 40% will take care of a lot of things and then move that counter story, story, story because it's all based on intelligence. And again, I'm going to ask you a simple question. You, if you guys are as intelligent as you think you are, what stops you from using your intelligence to make money for yourself? It's a simple question. Okay, so that's how it that how it's supposed to be done. That's how I did it. And if I could do it, then I don't see a reason why other people can't do it. Right. So uh, 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 can a middle management guy switch and do that? Yes, he can. A lot of people must be really, really getting scared nowadays that they're going to lose their jobs or they've taken a salary cut. Now imagine if this is the situation today. If you would have started three or four years back and you would be making uh, money, uh, it's called as a side hustle. You make that side hustle on the side and make 20, 30% of your salary or 40% of your salary. Really, I mean, even if you were into a position where you could lose your job, you really would not get stressed out. You really would not get it. Because it would not bother you at all, right? I quit my job and it was a very well paying job and an apex of the bank doing this and uh, and i could say that i'm not going to do this I, I don't want to depend on others for my salary but you guys could do it on a partial level you know and there is nothing which stops you that's the whole point you know uh, 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 but the, the, there are people writing to me saying that sir i'm you know i have to be quitting my job right now imagine you would have started three years back and you would have got that knowledge and you would be you know making able to make about 40 percent of your salary on the side even if your boss tells you to leave tomorrow, it really wouldn't bother you at all because you know you can stand on, the, on on your own self. So this is financial literacy. In fact, I am in the process of creating a program again for my children. How to? So it's called as Fire. It's, it's just into a conceptual stage called Fire. Financial literacy and retire early. F I R E. Financial literacy and retire early. Because I realize that a lot of people, a lot of my students come and ask me, how can you retire early? I don't want to retire at the age of 65 and then don't have the energy to do what I want to do. I want to be retiring early and travel the world, or I want to retire early and do what I want to do in my life. So I'm in, I'm in the process of creating that program. Actually, it's for my children again, because my son is 17. I want him to retire by the time he's 22 or so. So to get all his basics right by the time he's 22, get rid of uh, you know the desire to work, then do whatever you want to do in your life. But basically the money part is taken care of. So yeah, coming to that point. So uh, can you switch mid-management? Yes, but again, like I tell you, and I'm going to stress again, it is all about reading, studying, hard work, all about educating yourself. Um, uh, you know, it's all about developing a skill set, uh, practicing, uh, uh, you know, uh, spending the right amount of time and energy on developing yourself, making yourself a little bit better. So it's all about that. It's not, it's not very random, okay? Uh, can you plan your retirement earlier? Absolutely, 100%. There's no doubt about it. I mean, if I could do it by the time I was 36 and I, I come from a middle class family background, then I don't see a reason why you guys can't do it. The only problem is that till now, you guys have not thought about it. Now that you have thought about it and now that you heard it from me, you can't undo what you have heard. You know, so it's going to get inside your head like a worm saying, oh, you know, this guy did retire by 35 and he travels four months a year with his children. Uh, oh my god so i have seen one guy who's done it now the question is do you want to do it or not if you want to do it then there are certain things you need to do there are certain things you don't need to do if you don't want to do it you can continue with your nine to five job for the rest of your life you know uh, i have a friend of mine who works for one of the biggest organizations uh, in india and he's an alumni of mine so he's a friend of mine okay uh, same college so we went to an alumni meet. I met him. We were sitting down for drinks, and I told him, you know what? Where do you work? He said so and so. And I said I'm the the national head. So I looked at him and I said, yeah, very good. You're the national head. Please work extremely hard so that that stock performs, so that I make a lot of money. So the harder you work, the more money I'm going to make because I'm heavily invested in the stock. And he had nowhere to look at. It was a very funny thing. He's a friend, so we could have that conversation. But you get the point, right? So. The harder the professionals work in an organization, the more money you're going to make. So what is stock? What is stocks and what is stock market really? It's very simple. What is stocks? There are companies, international companies, where the hardcore and the smartest brains and professionals work for them in order to make profits. Okay? All you have to do is 
select those companies, buy them at the right price, and allow them to work hard so that they generate more profits so that you become more richer. The easiest explanation I can give it to you about the stock market, okay? Easiest explanation, I said. So let's move forward, okay? So can it, can it be another source of income without stress? Absolutely, provided you know what you need to know. So uh, this is all that I wanted to talk to you about, okay? Now, what is the kind of education which is available? Now, let me get to the what is the kind of education. There's a lot of education which is available. So first of all, uh, people think that uh, if you want to get into the finance and industry and into the stock market, like we have described it, uh, you need to be, uh, do a CA degree. So again, let me explain to you, stock market is not finance. It's, it's a little different. One statement I want it to be etched in your head and if you can able to take it away from here today and able to use it uh, to yourself. Please get this very correct. Economy does not equal to stock market. Economy may go sideways, stock market will go up. Economy may go down, stock market will still go up. Why? I'll give you a simple example. For the last six months, everybody has been sitting down and talking, saying that economy is doing badly, economy is doing badly. You know what has been happening with the Reliance Industries? While the economy is doing badly, the whole global investors are queuing up outside Antilla trying to buy a stake in Reliance Industries and Geo. The whole people are talking about economy going down and economy losing, and people, the, the smartest money, the smartest brains, the biggest investors are queuing up outside Mukesh Ambani to, to be a partner and buy a stake in Geo. If you invest in Geo, if you invest in Reliance Industries, the stock is only going to go up. So even if the uh, the equity markets, uh, even if the economy goes down, Geo is still going up. This is a prime example of what I call as there is no correlation between economy and stock market. And if you get it, now there is a certain way in which the stock market works. All you have to do is learn how the stock market works and you can make money for the rest of your life okay just a, so what is the education which is which is given to you a couple of education which is given to you okay number one is that you can do a program called a ca chartered accountancy we all feel a star chartered accountancy is finance no in fact most of the chartered accounts that i've met in my life uh, really really struggle in the, in the stock market because they get taught i don't know what they get taught they may have an obscure subject but that's not what it is uh, so it gives them a false sense of comfort saying that they know the stock market. In fact, we all feel that uh, chartered accountants uh, make a lot of money and they understand the stock market. And from my experience, because I have taught so many students, in fact, I have personally about five or 6,000 students of my own, apart from every other organization that I've taught, I must have taken at least about 5,000 physical classes in the last 10 years, physical classes, not even online. Okay, online, there's a huge library that I have. There are so many courses that we run. So. I, I can tell you with experience because I have read with so many that in fact the lousiest people who lose a lot of money because they get a false sense of comfort is the chartered accountant. Okay, so if you are going to have a friend who has a chartered accountant, you're going to ask him, "Hey, what stock to buy?" Believe me, you're going to get into trouble. I'm coming from experience. Okay, 10, 11 years into the market or teaching. Forget about everything else. So, which other courses? There is something which is called a CFA, Chartered Financial Analyst. You can do that program. Uh, it's a three-level program. It's an international CFA that you can do. It will teach you fundamental analysis. It will give you a little bit of perspective about the stock market works and how this thing, a lot of reading, a lot of studying. I personally have not taken the exam, but I've gone through the entire course material because that's what I do in my life. I read about four or five hours a day. Uh, each of these books are about so thick, okay? Uh, if you are into the habit of reading, it will take you at least about three, 400 hours to sit down and read with the course material for level one, then there is level two, and then there is level three. So you can do a CFA and uh, get into the stock market. And there is another degree which is called a CMT, Chartered Market Technician. Uh, the CMT, again, that is another wonderful degree which you can do. It is uh, self-learning, um, uh, level one, level two, level three, level one CMT would have about eight to 11 textbooks, level two again would have similar, level three again would have similar. Uh, it will take three to five years for you to do either a CFA or CMT, depending on how good you are uh, and how much work you put. Uh, uh, then there is another degree called as CFT, okay, Chartered Financial Technician. So CMT and CFT go parallel. CFT has level one, level two. CF, CMT has level one, two, three. 
CFT slightly, I mean, while uh, if you become a CMT or a CFT and you go to a bank and say that, listen, I've got a CMT degree and I have 10 years of experience, uh, then they probably will hire you as an investment advisor. Uh, sorry, it is called as a financial advisor, which, will, which means top end, top end, yeah? Or they will make you a wealth manager or they make you manage their top end clients. Uh, their salaries could anyway start between 25 to 30 lakh rupees. So if you are looking at that kind of degree for your children, um, CMT is great, CFT is great, T, uh, uh, CFA is a great degree. You can get your children. Don't get them into into CA because that's not going to help you. Okay, uh, a CMT degree will cost you anywhere between twenty two thousand to twenty two hundred dollars. So about two thousand five hundred dollars. Take a benchmark of it, three years or four years of your life for a CMT degree. Uh, uh, twenty five hundred dollars is what you'll have to pay plus books plus plus plus. So that's for CMT degree. CFT degree would be about about. Fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars plus 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 and books. Uh, about two three years of your life taking level one level two. CFA again depending on who, who if you are if you are looking at somebody to teach you, uh, then uh, it would again cost you somewhere about four, five to seven lakh rupees over three to five years. So these are the three major degrees you can take. If you have a little bit more money, then you can take your uh, uh, you know uh, uh, cat or uh, cat or uh, 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 or a CET uh, probably score a high amount of money uh, if you are able to get about 99% and uh, you apply for JBIMS uh, and if you get selected maybe you take an interview or a, a group discussion with me uh, you know probably get selected 27 students uh, that's when I get to teach you that you uh, you have a lot more money uh, you can go to London and do a program with LSE London School of Economics and get an MSc in Trading and Finance. Uh, if you don't want to do it from there, you can go to um, you can go to NCAD. I think NCAD also offers and uh, NCAD is a is a French university, so it, it offers uh, you a degree. Uh, I think uh, I, among the top other schools also. So if you go to um, uh, maybe Harvard or Kellogg's or Wharton, these uh, these organizations, I'm not very sure. These organizations also give you a degree in uh, trading and finance. So all this will be given to you if you take it from any of these. You will directly work with either Singapore or Hong Kong or London or Tokyo or um, maybe New York. You are lucky you can get there. You can work on the Wall Street. Uh, let me tell you one thing. Whatever, if you guys have seen this movie called Wolf of Wall Street, okay. How many of you guys have seen this movie called Wolf of Wall Street? Okay, so a lot of you guys have uh, seen this movie called Wolf of Wall Street. Now let me tell you, actual stock market is nothing like Wolf of Wall Street. The type, the kind of things which I'm talking about. Okay, so actual, so if you think that that is you know fooling people, that's not what it is. So there is a lot of work. So this is uh, this is what I had to deliver to you. I think I hope I have been able to. I did take a lot of time of yours, maybe an hour or so. Uh, so we started, yeah, because of the, the thing. But I hope I have been able to uh, clear off almost everything that I had to clear off. Now I would. Uh, this is the time where I would give you uh, answers to all your questions. So just one thing: if you guys are not a part of this program, so we have a group called as Stock Baba, which is on Facebook. So if you guys are not a part of it, if you are a part of it, great. If you're not a part of it, because there are a lot of people who. If you have any questions or doubts on um, stocks, or where you're losing your stocks, you can ask it here. Uh, this is uh, a non-commercial group in the sense that, that we are not selling you anything. We are not telling you anything. Uh, you ask me a question, I'll give you the most honest answers as possible. So uh, so that uh, uh, you know you don't lose money. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can ask me now. Uh, just give me one minute to read it because I'm I'm a little old in life, so it takes a little bit time for me to read it. So let me read it one one step at a time. And give you answers to all the questions that you ask me. So let me just 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 hang on. Now don't put any questions that they go up. Let me read questions and give you answer one step at a time. So Rahul K says, so you said the only thing to know is what stocks to buy and what stocks. I know it takes a lot of research and ground, but do you think that technological advance happens? Can you answer that in the future? I don't, Rahul. I really don't understand your question. Honestly speaking. You said it takes a lot of time. So, it, so, so the, all the research that you're going to do, okay, everything that you're going to use, everything that you're going to learn, for you to make money is only three things. Choose the right stocks, 
buy it at the right price and sell it at the right price. And this is the question, three questions which need you to be answered to make money. So everything that you're going to do, reading CFA level one, level two, level three, CMT level one, level two, level three, going to uh, going and doing an MSc in finance is basically answering these three questions. That's how it is. Uh, so I hope I have been able to give you an answer, Rahul, to this. Is that if that is what you're asking? Okay. Uh, Tejo Konangra is asking me a question, sir. How can we attend your training apart from the finance course you teach, sir? How can we attend your training? Okay. So you asked me the same question twice. So here's what what I can tell you is that if you are interested in something like that, uh, I'll flash you my uh, my mobile number, which is seven zero three double nine one 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 one. Let me just say it again to you. Seven zero three twice nine. Two times one, two times one, one. WhatsApp to me and let me see what I can do for you. Okay. Uh, so if you're very keen on learning, WhatsApp me and I'll I'll, I'll take with you on the side. Okay. Sanket Joshi is asking. It was as uh, if is it as well advisable to quit job and do full time trading in the current situation? Sanket Joshi is asking. Is it advisable to quit your job? Now it depends on what your skill sets are, right? Now. If you if you work hard and it takes time to develop skill sets, it takes time to develop knowledge. If you are ready for it, quit your job. There is no point of you wasting your time, uh, you know, working for your job where you could be uh, trading and making money. So it all depends on you. It doesn't depend on me. It's like you are asking a cricketer: Is it advisable to quit my job and play full time cricket? Then, then the question is: How good a cricketer are you? Are you a Delhi level cricket player, or you are school level cricket player, or you are Ranji type player, or are you a national level cricket player? So, what is your skill set? Are you understanding? So, it is, it is, it is, it is. Don't ask. Give me a. Uh, allow me to give you a singular answer here. Okay. Work on your skill sets. If they are good for you, you can quit your job. Okay. Uh, and you can move ahead. So, Vikas Rajpal says, "Old with a lot of gold." Thank you, sir. I hope you mean what you are saying. Uh, so uh, Tanush uh, Madgaukar is saying, is it necessary for a person to be good in math to invest and earn the stock market? Absolutely not. The question is, is it? Do you need to be good in math? So absolutely not. Let me tell you. Okay, my children have been trained ever since they were six years of age. Okay, and they know almost everything that a professional trader needs to know. Okay, I have got students who now get their children and come to my programs, and I have. Their children, as young as three years and four years and six years and seven years, who go through the training and they learn a lot more faster. I mean, I'm not. It's not even a joke, really. It's not even a joke. So it is about pattern recognition. It is about understanding how the markets work. Okay, uh, you have a child who's 14, 15 years of age can very, very easily learn if he is very, very, uh, uh, if he is very, very dedicated to it. So knowledge of maths is not needed at all. In fact, I know someone who is a little bit deaf. Dyslexic and has the trouble with math, and uh, I tell the mother of the child that don't worry because I, I I will make sure that that child becomes an absolute rock star investor and a trader in the market because math is not needed at all. So if, if that is what you wanted to hear, let me tell you straight off. Okay, my son who is 16 and a half, 17 right now, and uh, last one and a half year he's been uh, studying for his 10th standard, uh, he was he was taking rock star trades when he was in in ninth standard. Okay, so believe me from me. Okay, so Divesh Kantawale is asking a question: How much time should I initially devote to learning from actually uh, this thing? So it depends on how much, how fast you want to go. Yeah, right? it's like asking a question: Sir, I want to become a professional guitarist. How much time should I dedicate? I say all. You know, sleep for three hours a night. Apart from that, dedicate the entire amount, 21 hours. Sitting down and playing guitar. You want to become a professional guitarist? Do that. Yeah. Uh, the more you put into it, the more you get it. It's, it's as simple as that. So, how much time? Don't be stingy with your time. So give more time to what you want in your life, right? Uh, uh, there was a time when I was sitting down and learning the, this. I used to be sitting down and sleeping with my books in the night for about four, about four hours, five hours. Five hours I used to sleep. In the night, when I used to sleep, the books used to be on my bed. When I used to get up in the morning, first thing in the morning, I used to Go out, brush my teeth, start reading books, okay, or sitting down and this thing. I have sat down when I came to India and I started, uh, you know, when I just about uh, quit banking and I came to India, this is about 10, 11 years back. I used to spend about 18 hours a day reading charts, 18 hours a day about understanding what charts are, understanding how they move. Uh, uh, I have spent uh, the whole 31st night while everybody else was sitting down and drinking and going to parties. And I used to, I have actually sat down and gone through charts. 
till about two o'clock in the night, telling them that while everybody else parties, I'm going to work hard so that when I start partying, okay, nothing should stop me. So yeah, what stops you, right? So Divish, you got the answer, okay? Uh, Rohit Kaveri, do uh, uh, how much? Okay, so Rohit Kaveri says, does making trading from home as a career need certain corpus? Absolutely, Rohit. Abhi aapko danda karna hai, to obviously you'll have a certain corpus, right? That's given. I mean, you can't be starting to trade with one lakh rupees or fifty thousand rupees. So, and if you are down to one lakh rupees, then I want to ask you a question. Sir, you have been working for such a long period of time. How come you didn't save? I mean, if you've been working for last one, one and a half, you know, about five or six years or seven years before you decide to quit your job and get trading. So what have you done in last six or seven years that you have not been able to get the capital to trade? It's a business. You understand trading, investing is a business. You need to have a little bit of a, uh, about a, about a business mindset. Okay. When you are starting a business, are you going to start your business with two lakh rupees? No, you are going to put as much money as possible into it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Right? Uh, uh, Sunil Dat Yadav. So Bhavin says, start, uh, waiting for fly to launch. Yeah, you know, that's in the progress. Sunil Dat Yadav is saying, uh, algorithm have a pivotal role in conducting the analysis of a particular stock. Or uh, uh, Matt does algorithm. So uh, I don't know what algorithm means. So we all function on a certain algorithm, right? Algorithm, your habits are an algorithm, right? Your paradigms are your algorithms. Your behaviors are your algorithms. Algorithms is for everything, okay? But I'm, I think you are asking me a question about algorithm trading, okay? Keep that on the side. Most of the algorithm traders don't make money. Uh, internally, I can tell you, okay? So keep that on the side. Doesn't matter. You can still make a lot of money. There is nothing in the world as complex as a human mind which can decipher as complex a situation like the stock market. Please understand that no matter how powerful a computer becomes, the stock market and the complexities of the stock market can anytime overcome computers because the computer program is written by the human mind. Okay? So, and the stock market a lot of time works on emotions for you to understand the logic of emotions the computer cannot decipher it so uh, so so that is what i wanted to tell you so forget about the uh, forget about the algorithm trading these are all fancy things and fancy words in fact let me give you an example uh, there is a there is a there's a fund of fund called as man investment man investment is a hedge fund so it's a hedge fund fund of fund it is the largest world's largest hedge fund fund of funds for last 35 years okay and they had a fund which is called as a algo trading fund way back in 2004 and i'm not even talking right now way back in 2004 it is based out of london and they used to say that we'll easily make about 14 percent returns in a us dollar and i tell you that it always lost money so rest of the mutual funds made money rest of the hedge funds made money but man of man uh, you know, algorithmic trading fund never made money. Check up the data for it. So uh, don't get into all these fancy things. Uh, fancy things come and go. Pure human intelligence and pure hard work always precedes everything else. Okay. Thank you so much, Bhavi Nashar. Okay. Uh, Hina Agarwal says, So what are the other means of learning apart from CFA, CLT and get into full-time trading? Hina, if you are serious about learning, and if you would want to consider some of the programs that I have, you can, you know, WhatsApp me. Again, my number is 703-99-11111. WhatsApp me. Uh, maybe I'll offer you a program. Okay. Uh, Girish Sangla says, any books you would recommend for beginners? There are multiple books you can recommend for your beginners. If you are very, it depends on how serious you are. You are very, very serious. Simple. Go find out all the textbooks of CMT or find out all the textbooks of CFA. Or if you want to make it very, very cheap, then best uh, go to your Addiwala if they are open now or go to Fort if they are open now. Go and tell them, give me last semesters or last year CFA books which have been sold at a throwaway price. Take those textbooks, sit at home, sit down and start reading. Take the, take the textbooks of CFA, uh, pick up some textbooks of CMT. So there are a lot of, there is a, there is a book by technical analysis by, uh, there are so many technical analysis books. You pick up one or two of them. Hope and pray to God that you are able to read through all of them without getting bored and dying of death. Uh, but you can do that. Uh, so you can pick up those books. I think Martin Pring is one of them. Pick up Martin Pring. Uh, 
uh, we'll go through the technical analysis book of Martin Fring. Hopefully, you will be able to understand or make some sense out of it. Uh, but here's what I want to tell you uh, that uh, it's very difficult for you to learn about the stock market from the books. For simple is that books can only capture data and knowledge. It cannot capture skill sets. Okay, uh, stock market trading or investing is like a skill set. Okay, guitar playing is like a skill set. Painting is like a skill set. Okay. Skill can only be taught by a guru. Skill can only be taught by personal interaction. Skill can only be taught where, where somebody who is a trainer or somebody who is a teacher pushes you against the wall and teaches you and tells you that this is right and wrong. What is right, what is wrong. Books will not correct you. Teachers can correct it. So you can read those books. Martin Fring is a great book. It's about 475 pages of Indian edition. Pick it up. Costs about 675 on Amazon. Order it, sit down, read it. Uh, I don't know what is your reading speed. Sit down and read it, try to decipher it, get into the charts, learn it, see where it goes. Alternatively, if you want to consider, uh, I have a YouTube channel. I'm not a YouTuber, so I will not keep on saying, please give me a like, please give me a comment, please subscribe. None of those funny things will happen from my side. But if you want that, there is some base, some knowledge base which I put on my YouTube channel. Go and uh, go through it. It's called Chapin Pudar. Uh, get whatever information you can, try experimenting, see what works. Is that okay? So Ganesh Sangla, try those books. Uh, there are enough books to be uh, read or learned. Uh, any other questions that anybody wants to ask me? Anything else apart from what I I have been trying to explain? Is there anybody else wanting to ask me any questions or doubts? You can ask me. Uh, Krutika is asking a question, sir. Uh, my son wants to choose trading as a career. Can he directly start learning trading related programs like from IMS, uh, from me? uh after 10 standard or he still has to follow the standard education pattern side by side is college or job experience important so, so let me answer this in a in a different manner uh Prithika, for your son and you have been my student for your son he is very serious about trading or investing uh, for your son to get into this uh one he does not have to wait till 10 standard to start learning he can start learning right now there are so many students who get their children involved into trading right now to get your son involved into trading or learning right now, uh, let him do his 10th standard, let him do his 12th standard, let him do his basic formal education. Again, it's not that this or that you can be learning his 11th, 12th standard and learning about investing and trading on the side. He can get into a graduation and learning this on the side while he is going to college and uh, attending his college. He could be sitting down and investing, he could be sitting down and trading and making money. So, there is no reason why. Your son at the age of 18 and 19, while he goes to college, okay, uh, gets becomes a full-time investor or a trader at the age of 18 or 19 or 20. Probably manage the funds of his professors; they will give him good marks. Probably manage the funds of his of his uh, friends if they have the thing of learning this uh, to get a little bit of brownie points and have his own pocket money so that he does not have to depend on his mother to pay for his education or to pay but i'm saying it let it not be this or that like for example my younger son um, he's in ninth standard today he enjoys cooking he enjoys the thing so it's very clear that he's going to get into culinary arts so does that mean and he is very clear that he wants to become a trader so does that mean he i don't send him to the best culinary school in the world no he can go and he can probably go to ecole mondiale in in uh, france or canada learn how to cook and do trading on the side and finish his education because he likes to learn it, not because he has to work for anybody else. Yeah, he could become a chef. He could be a very celebrated chef and cook in his home for his father and trade on the side and make a lot of money. So, so there you go. So, uh, so there, there is saying, Kesha, uh, his son is six years of age and understand candlesticks and trends. So there you go. Right, so Krutika, I hope I have been able to give you an answer to that. Right, so Sachin Mori is asking you a question. Sir, I have no idea how much money should be needed if one decides to learn stock market and earn full time. I also have no idea, Sachin, what is your capability? What is your knowledge base? What do you know? What have you learned? What have you studied? So if I don't know any of these things, I can give you a figure, right? I also, okay. If you know what you are doing in the stock market, then if you have 1 lakh rupees, you'll make 1 crore out of it. If you don't know what you're doing in the stock market, and if you have 1 crore, it will very quickly become a 1 lakh rupee. 
so it is not a factor of how much money you have but it is a factor of what you know sachin have you got the answer i'm sorry i'm a little blunt here so it is got nothing to do with how much money you have but how much money you, what you are doing any other questions that you want to ask me anything that you want to ask me you can ask me now ayush uh, kejriwal is asking a question how do you uh, balance technicals and fundamentals ayush you don't need to balance technicals and fundamentals uh, either technicals are okay or fundamentals are okay fundamentals are for investing technicals are for trading and investing uh, technical knowledge captures the essence of fundamental knowledge i actually have a video which explains to you how technical knowledge how technicals captures the the essence of fundamental so it, both of them can be coming in together so you don't need to learn if you if you ask me uh, i would only teach technicals to my children fundamentals is not needed i think it's a waste of time so if you are able to do tech, information comes to you on charge right ayush all right uh, pratik is asking a question thank you so much for sharing okay thank you so much pratik any other questions anything that you want to ask me anybody else i'm sorry this took a lot of time but uh, i thought it was needed all right so i think uh, this is where we are concluding thank you guys thank you for your time thank you for attending this i know it has been a little longer it had been having these breaks but uh, i hope i've been able to give you in the most honest possible so thanks and bye for all the people who need to contact me on a personal basis chat me please text me on the number let me see what i can do for you all right so goodbye and good night and have fun don't be too naughty very soon i'll be able to upload this so that you guys can get what you are getting All right thanks bye